Okay, so um, we'll start the session like it's uh, more about uh, TB. So what we'll talk about, like people who already know, both uh, who are here and uh, also you know people who are joining us virtually. Uh, WHO have released the, the TB package a uh, long time back, and they have keep on modifying and including new new tools, new uh, new uh, new module inside the. Uh, DHS to uh, as a package so that country can actually install it. So they have lots of changes what happened from the previous version and now. So there are new things that have been added. I'll just go through what we can actually get from the WHM the package. And after that one, like we'll talk about the, um, the effort which we've been doing with um, the Global Fund and IOM on a regional TB migrant process. This has been one of the key topic in many of the places where how best we can try to share the data from one country to the neighboring country. There are lots of also challenges. In Southeast Asia, its challenges is also a bit more because like none of the Southeast Asia countries speak the same language. So we touch on that one. And after that one, like we have a presentation from um, uh, Pakistan who we'll talk about the TB initiative in Pakistan. So this is the a bit overview. So um, let me just like start with uh, presenting the global package. So as you all know, like we we have this DHL to metadata package, which means like we are for each and these programs, like from EPI, um, HIV, malaria, COVID, uh, disease surveillance, TB, RMNCH. So you have all these packages, which is a basically DHL to metadata, which can be installed in your country implementation when you're starting fresh. This was the concept like uh, happened long time back that Every country were designing or creating the same data element, and it was very different. Some places they called ANC one, some places ANC first visit. So it was very hard to share the data across. So and also some of the key fields were missing. So people were just like like when the malaria package released, the the GD nine was completely missed, and also when TB packages was released, then the countries oh we don't have this data element. Why are we not collecting the gene experts and all the things were few of the things were were missed. So when the people are designing this country TB system, so they could know, OK, this is the reference, reference statement, um, a referring, um, the, the reference where they can actually look at what all the different data fields, indicators, and everything is there. In the metadata package for all these things, we have three types. One is for analytics. It's not only about data entry. It's more about how best we can try to analyze this data, use this data for our own needs. So that was also focused on. And then we focus on two things. One is on aggregate data, where they can collect the, um, the aggregate data, especially for TB, is usually quarterly data, which has been collected across all the places. TB is quite structured in all the country, compared to if you go from one country to other place, like you just see it's exact same thing. So this was actually very good to just see, like, OK, people know how TB systems are. But if you go for other programs, it's very different. But TB was well structured, and at least in most of the countries what we've seen. So they have aggregate data. And now we are also moving down to the tracker. So then like most of the places, let's say they started with the aggregate. And then they said, no, like now we want to use the DHS to tracker to collect the, the case-based surveillance data. So I'll go through the both the aggregate and as well as the case base. And then I can quickly show a few dashboards and the, the online resources where you can try to play around with. So in the TP aggregate package, so these are all the different modules of the TB has been included. So before, this was very new, very latest. Uh, when we started the long time back, not all these things were there. There's only case notification, outcome, uh, second line, the stock wasn't there. Um, um, our MDR TB was there. Household contact wasn't there. That was also newly added. Laboratory wasn't there. COVID-19 uh, impact, that was also not there. So those are the few things where University of Oslo and WHO team are working together to build up all this aggregate package so that like country can actually use on this one. And these are all for the old records what they've been trying to deal with. So this again is still on uh, the aggregate, what we're talking about. We have like a TB case notification, which is basically quarterly and yearly, where you have all the treatment histories, uh, new and replas, uh, laboratory diagnosis details, TB and HIV activity. Uh, and then like the treatment, treatment outcome, the second line, and then the MDR. So these are, again, it's an aggregate data, which we've been trying to collect across all the places. 
from the WHO packages, what they have done is they have all these materials, including the documentation, the design work, and everything, is available both in English and in French. Um, not quite sure how many Asian countries are using French, but at least we have it. So, which is widely used in Africa and other places, but like in Asia, it's usually English, and then like we, some of the places has been translated into the local language, but at least like we have these guidelines. And this is the other uh, module which they had, the, the household, uh, the compact tracing. Uh, when we first started, like this is the aggregate module, not the, the tracker module. They will still be focusing on the aggregate module to try to identify all these things. Where they also have the other module which can be included. I'm not going to go into detail of each and every section. I'll show you where you can actually go and access these places and also a demo site where you can use. Uh, try to do the data entry, do the analysis and all. So that can, can come to you a bit later. This one, after the COVID, the COVID impact assessment, this was the, also the application, uh, the framework which was applied into the TB because there were quite a lot of description. Um, the, especially during the COVID, lots of service got uh, hampered on because like they could not come around, they could not reach. So this was also something they want to try to, to include up just to diagnose and and see what all the different countries was reporting up. Um, even in Vietnam, when they tried to deal with, even though it was a lungs hospital, so that was also the basis where they're dealing with the COVID and also uh, the TB. Um, other uh, key important, um, this one is the tracker, but like this is a, a TB laboratory, this is an aggregate data set. But in the uh, platform, you have a, a um, tracker to aggregate um, a push, that I'll talk to you a bit later, but this is in a TB laboratory data where the people can enter the laboratory details. So then like you have all the things, what is needed to solve the TB one. Uh, now I'm focusing on case-based surveillance part. So this is basically um, the patient tracked or the, the TB uh, course, uh, the health program things, plus it's the TB case surveillance itself. Then like we have TB case surveillance plus lab integrated. So that like you where you register a patient, and the lab people will enter the lab details. So it is completely different. It's not the, the same person. The health worker are doing the, the, all the TB things. And then the, the lab people are actually accessing the, uh, the case and updating the, um, the, the lab details. Uh, then again, uh, the um, drug resistance uh, things, that's also something which we've been, which has been already there. That's also a tracker program. And then TB, uh, case surveillance plus the, um, the lab and household contact, that's coming up. Many other countries, they have actually started combining, or not combining, but they have two programs. One was case surveillance and contact tracing. We, when we did the COVID, they have been also using it, but like as a global package, they've been working on so that like when the country want to have the case surveillance, uh, TB case surveillance, they also can use the contact tracing. But I know many countries have used contact tracing also and they have customized and they have customized the DHRs to, to meet their own need. Okay, so this was the, the basic system design. All these materials are also there uh, online. I'll show you where you can try to find it. The tracker, when you people, when, when you download the package, what you get is the, all the data field and also the um, uh, um, program rules or the validations all kind of uh, indicators, what you try to get, how we can try to import. So all those things are been um, defined uh, carefully. So you have the tracker, and then like you have also the program indicator where you can try to analyze, and then also how best you can try to link the, the data between, um, uh, like when you transfer a particular patient from one, one hospital to other hospital, how are we going to try to deal with it? In TB, the transfer is also within the country. Each and every country are having this TB transfer form. So that's OK, but outside the country is also a problem. But like inside DHS, too, how best we can try to transfer and admit. From 229 onwards, we, there is a transfer module, which we are, again, enhancing further so that like we have transfer and then the other people can accept it when they come around. Right now, it's just like transfer and then like uh, we don't really know whether it is coming or not, but like it's, we are actually um, having a relationship or the transfer module embedded so that like we can handle all these issues later on.
Um, there is also like minimum set of um, indicator which can be used, with, which also has its own dashboard and other things. But, uh, again, based on the TB age group, which is different from the HIV age group, and then gender and the case type. So those are the dashboards and the aggregate information is already created in this package so that you can try to download it. Especially when we, the one of the whole point is, whole point of this package is like you can download and customize it and then the countries need the programmer who is or the co configuration person who is importing this one don't have to spend two weeks so now they can just like spend maybe one day to just like configure and set up all these things so that like the system is operational and all the key figure uh, key points of the system are embedded or can be used so this is just um, the few of the um, the basic structure of also again in the DHIS2 so you have enrollment, and then like you have the different stages where you can try to go through. The treatment is repeatable, uh, uh, the monitoring, um, the laboratory, and then the outcome. Before it was after the treatment, we had the outcome. We didn't have the laboratory results, and so now laboratory is there. Before the laboratory result was under the treatment as a section. Now it's a separate stage so that the laboratory people can actually just access it and enter those details. So then like we don't have to, to worry about the other things. So these were the few changes has been happened around the place. Just to go down a bit more into detail, so during the enrollment, you register all the, the person information, the person demographic details, and all different kind of things. And then like you have the um, uh, diagnosis and the results, um, and then the, the notification, the treatment stage, the laboratory stage, and the outcome. So these are all different stages and different sections what you can try to find the places. Uh, based again based on the different country needs you can try to configure or change but like this one has at least been implemented in many places so we know it's going to it's been working and then any kind of feedback also be given to the, the global people it's, it will be welcome around these are some few um, additional feature which has been included in the program itself in the package where you can get a real-time notification um it's like case notification poor data quality all those things has been set up and then also like inside dhis2 in the top bar we have few widgets where you can get the the key information of a particular patient um which is uh, relevant like data diagnosis the patient age uh, classification details those things can be uh, in the top bar when you log into the dhis2 again you in dhis2 tracker you have this feedback mechanism or the feedback widget which is also configured around here. Okay. Um, then, like the, in other places, like what happened in many countries, uh, the aggregate and the tracker data are in the same system. In some cases, like in Lao, the tracker are in different server, aggregate is in different server. So you want to actually share the, um, the when the people are entering the data, they don't want to enter the aggregate data again. Uh, in Lao, they have stopped using the, the aggregate system completely. So now all the things are only by case surveillance. And then like that data is pushed to, to from the tracker to aggregates into a different server. Not even in the, in the same instance, uh, it's in a different instance and different server. That has been like actually been requested many times. So this has been like we already have. So all the program indicators and everything what we calculated has been pushed on to the aggregate data set so that like you can have um, the aggregate uh, information also. It is not like in many countries, like you have, you can say, okay, the northern part is well versed, it has good internet, it has uh, lots of trained people, but southern part, they have the bad internet and the bad things. So then like we can just say, okay, northern part can start doing the tracker and the, um, the southern part, they can do the aggregate. But then like the tracker person can actually, the tracker things can be pushed to aggregate so that at the country level, you can see the overall country picture. That was the reason like why we want to have push the data from the tracker to aggregate. Not all the facilities will have the same kind of infrastructure or human resources. So in one places, you can just start with it. And you can also have this list of uh, assessment, just saying, okay, do we have the capacity? Do we have the infrastructure? Okay, if you don't have the infrastructure, let's do the aggregate one. If you have the infrastructure and train people, then like you can do the, the, uh, the case surveillance. But as a country, as a overall, you can still get the exact same result. 
Um, these are the few of the resources. I'll share the presentation again. All this presentation is already online. You can get all these different details. If you want to access more about the demo site itself, like how you can try to do. So this is the instance. I'll just show you what our different things are there. And about each and every uh, field and section, I will also show you where you can try to find. This is, will be in DHS documentation metadata. I will show you that one in a few seconds. And if you have more queries and the things, you can actually ask these two people, uh, they, you, Ria, and the, uh, Victoria. They are um, working with the WHO team on um, dealing with all the things. Okay, quickly, let me just uh, try to change. Okay. So um, this is the demo. I'm just like let's like, see if I'm logged out. Uh, so demo dot dot org slash HMIS. So just for the sake, like how we can try to log in. So these are a list of all the, the username and password. So anyone like with the different uh, type, you have French, Portuguese, Arabic, and all different things. So you can actually use that one. So I'll just use the English. So here, these are a list of all the dashboard, which when you install the TB package, you get all these different things. So you have notification. All the TB um, uh, drug resistance is tracker-based. So all the notification is aggregate-based. So you can actually just see. Because for the end user, they don't really have to worry about whether it's tracker or things, especially for the high-level manager. So they can actually just see like how things are. And then you can go through so each and every place is so DRS enrollment. It's also the one of the things where you can just see for the last 12 months. And these data are dummy data. Don't worry about the, the data itself. But just for the demo sake, so we have created a few um, uh, data so that you can just see the how charts and maps can be can be used. So if you want to try to play around with the actual the, the dashboard, so you have all the dashboards from here. And plus, if you want to see actual data entry and all the things, you can try to go around uh, to that one also. And plus the aggregate data entry. It's a nice time. So these are the these as we just mentioned. These are all the the dummy data. So what we have included, and it's a Lao organet. That's what we've been like. Lao government was. Um, was happy to share their structure so that like at least like a, a bit as a, we don't have to just always use the Sierra Leone database so we can try to use the, the loud database for all our testing and demonstration and things so as I mentioned before so you have the patient profile and then like you have the case reporting samples and all these different things which you can try to, to deal with and this was the top bar which I was mentioning about so where the key features can be actually put on, and like you know, it's already been configured. Um, most of the people who have been using Tracker now, like they know how to configure the top digit and other things. So, 
those things are already set, so we don't really have to, to work through it. Okay, coming now to how do we find all this material? So you can actually go for dhs2.org, which I guess like we are all familiar with, and in the documentation, just go for dhs2.org documentation, and then in the topics, you can just say metadata. And here it gets a list of all different kind of things. And here you have the TB. And then like you can find all the design uh, of the things, whether it is the logistic, the design part. Just one second. Let's say TB notification. Then you get the list of all the structures, how it has been used, um, what all the different fields we are using. So you have all the materials on here. So for the TB, so you have logistic, case surveillance, um, uh, DRS, and also COVID impact access control. So you have release node and as well as the design and how best how you can try to install this package into your DHIS. It's okay. Any questions? No questions, perfect. <laughs> yeah, so now, we, we most of us, we have used this package. Uh, what we want to try to do is like how, how this package has actually helped us in not only in one country, but like for the regional TB migrant. So to start with, uh, I'll ask Jan to give a background on the regional TB project and we take it forward from there. Yeah, let's see if we can find the presentation. There. This is a project uh, going on uh, between the, the five countries in the so-called Mekong sub-region. That's uh, the country. So let's just go to the next slide so we see the maps. Uh, not a map, but the, 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 the flags. So that's the five countries. Uh, uh, Vietnam, one of them, and then uh, Cambodia, Myanmar, Thailand, and Laos. And it's based on uh, the, the data warehouse. It's based on the the TB package, which uh, which uh, WH TB package, which John just uh, referred to, and uh, it contains also a referral module, meaning that you can refer a TB patient from one country to the other country. So that's an important feature of, of the of the database. And in order to develop this, the Data elements, of course, they're not the same in all countries, but the data elements have been uh, included, identified and included. And so far, there's no real data, only test data in the database, because as we will see when we come to some challenges, uh, there are some challenges around sharing of data across countries. So that is something that we're working on now and how to establish uh, uh, data sharing agreements, but also in this case, I mean, they're, all, they're already sharing data when they're referring a uh, patient, but that's very ad hoc and uh, not in any way secure. So the political challenge is about sharing of data. And the more technical issues, the challenges, that's of course that uh, the countries have different data sets. All countries are the, their own kind of uh, the development uh, trajectory, which has uh, resulted in different, different data sets. And uh, there's also many differences in how migrants or non-nationals are registered in the database. 
you have some that are not using Vietnam, for example, they didn't have uh, initially, they didn't have anything, then you had to look to see if it was a non-Vietnamese name in order to find out whether it was a non-national. And others are just saying foreigners, and other again are just having different nationalities that you can select among. And uh, of course, countries need to agree on, on these data standards, what data to, to uh, include and which data to report to the, 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 to the database. And we are starting with what, the, what is called the TB09, TB, uh, that's a referral uh, uh, form used by many countries, and even that is not a real standard because it's different between countries. So that's also uh, one problem. And in these five countries, the special thing is that there are four different uh, alphabets or, or scripts. So that uh, if I, if somebody write my name in the Myanmar or Cambodia or uh, Lao uh, script, then I will not understand it, and nobody else apart from the Lao or etc. will understand it. And that's, of course, a, a challenge when you make a, a shared database. And uh, we will use, we, also we use English as the official uh, language, and we use the local language in the data, in, in the, from the country where the data is registered. Meaning if you are registering the data in, in, in Lao, then, then you use Lao language when you write the name of the patient, etc. But also English, so that when you send it to Vietnam, then they can understand it. And there are other challenges from um, apart from the script, etc. Because you have the Thai Buddhist calendar, for example, is 543 years uh, more than our uh, more uh, Gregorian uh, calendar. And also it's a challenge that the years are, 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 end, years are ending in September. So it's a, not only to add a number of years, <laughs> to, to, to do different, different uh, things. And uh, this is different from the Nepal problem because you have a different uh, calendar again. So, <laughs> so no, when, we, when, we, when, we, when we include this in, 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 uh, in, uh, in the Nepal, then, then we will have it yet another way to translate uh, the dates. So that's, uh, that's the challenges when we deal with, with the cross-country uh, uh, systems. And uh, this is an overview of, 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 uh, of the database. The database, the reader database, receives data on non-nationals from the country's official databases. So everything is about interaction with the, with the country databases. And uh, the data on migrants, that's aggregate, so that we can produce dashboards. And it's on the patient when we come to the referral to another country. So if you look more closely into how these uh, referrals are being carried out today, I mean, we have used uh, practices from the country to, to design the database. And if you look at uh, how it is now. Ah, John. Now I lost. Uh, ah, there we go. Just a delay. Delay. So this is an example of how this is Thailand. This is Thailand and this is uh, Laos. And if you look at how referrals are being carried out today, it's being carried out in a very ad hoc manner, where they're using uh, a line app, which or WhatsApp or, or Facebook or, or, or things like that, between twin hospitals where you have along the border because it's a river and you have typically one town on the one side and then another town on the other side. So you have hospitals that are working together. So they are just doing it uh, as kind of a personal system. So when we said that, yeah, it's more secure to, to use, use uh, say, a secure database, then uh, the, so far it's been, oh, yeah, but we don't have a data sharing agreement. Yes, but you are sharing data here. Yes, but uh, that's uh, kind of ad hoc and inofficial. So, so the point is just to get this regulated, this, this data sharing, which is actually going on. This is another example from... from uh, uh, the border region, and this is between Thailand and Myanmar. 
in a place an area which is called Ranong between between then the provincial head uh, office and and the Ranong hospitals where they organize the referrals with the twin hospitals on the other side of the border which is then Kao Tong uh, hospital in Myanmar and from there the patients are referred to the other other hospitals and other regions in in Myanmar and you see that they have organized it so that all the southern parts of Thailand is going to, I mean referrals is going through the provincial office and for the province itself and the town itself of, of Ranong where it is a quite a big uh, migrant population is organized through the hospital so this is uh, organized in the same way but there's a NGO there which is supporting and helping uh, the referrals so it's it's uh, very much based on on, on this their active uh, participation and similarly in another uh, border region in, in Thailand Myanmar where we have another that's Mesot area and and Miyawadi hospital where they have similar similar uh, interaction but here here also it's a NGO the SMRU which is actually uh, facilitating the, the referrals but also here it's it's on a paper based here they're using the paper form which is the patient is carrying with them but with the help of, of the of the of the SMRU NGO so these are the practices uh, as they are today and the practices that we try to then uh, improve and make better through the database and for the example of, of uh, Lao again where we have uh, set up a kind of a test test in my environment that tested out these different uh, areas uh, a proof of concept of the mi migrant uh, migrant management you see that you go from the paper register to the Lao PDR TB database making it a bit more simple for us since that is already DHIS, DHIS2 and we are also based on experience from from uh, the COVID-19 uh, certificate and QR codes we are suggesting and want if, if, if there's some interest for it to have a, a self-hold referral card which a patient can carry themselves with with the QR code if that is, is uh, wanted and that's possible at least and maybe that's a more secure way of, of doing a patient hold hold uh, hold record and then you go to the regional migrant database which is then interacting directly with with the uh, with the country databases and this is the step-by-step -step, uh, uh, way the referrals are being uh, carried out and uh, one thing is of course to to have a regular uh, regular export of aggregate data from the country so that we get uh, dashboards and an overview of, of the situation but when it comes to the transfer or referral of patient itself we say that there are we have seen other systems uh, which are doing this and it's they have, for example they have another use one place in or at least uh, being implemented one place in Thailand but they are just using a, a database which is shared I mean you can log in from the both sides of the border and then you just uh, put the patient there and you take a telephone call and say no we have put the patient there please take it and but the requirement from the government uh, of these five countries is that you should not have anything separated from the national TB databases that's why it must go from and to the national databases and you see here that the referral in and out go from the national database and in this example where we put up uh, a kind of a test environment between Vietnam and Laos then it goes concretely between these two two databases and when it's transferred from one country to the regional database messages go to the con receiving country messages it can be email it can be whatever and then they get a message and then they can 
receive, download, or the first must accept. That's also part of the requirement that you cannot just send the patient uh, wherever. You must accept it, and when you have accepted, then you can get it. And then miss it back that you have uh, have uh, received the, the patient. You confirm the, uh, that the patient is received, and then again uh, later in the treatment, uh, treatment outcome. Because one problem with with uh, with uh, migrants and TB is that one thing is that countries tend not to be interested in their treatment because then that will destroy their treatment outcome uh, indicators and this is then an effort to to uh, address that problem i think that's uh, more or less uh, we can have a look at uh, should we have a look at that uh, where is that uh, tb09 form where was that that was somewhere here uh, maybe i jumped it when uh, i had some delay there just to see yeah that one so this is this is the the form we, this is the we, we have used uh, this uh, paper form to design the the data flow because here you have the section a is with with the with uh, with the patient demographics the uh, diagnosis treatment and then you have a part c which is the bottom which is it's used because you're cutting cutting the paper and then you, of course you cut the bottom of the paper first that's why that is c and then you send that as a kind of a confirmation that the patient is received and the b is, is the is the treatment outcome and we have designed the system based on that but this is uh, this is the tb09 as it used on the border between uh, thailand and myanmar and it is different. We have seen many different versions of this, and every country will use it a bit differently. So, yeah, that's that's uh, how how far we are in, in the, 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 the conceptual design. And uh, John, you wanted to show some screenshots, etc. Yeah, actually, like it's um, what we have. Like one of the things. This was the new form which they have been designed only between. Thailand and uh, Myanmar to um, transfer the data. But again, then the problem is when we just see from Thailand, they write everything, including the name and the TB unit is in Thai language, which is not understood by Myanmar people. So the CSOs, what is to get the, the health worker, they will fill this one. The hospital will fill this one up. And the CSO will like make the bracket and just transfer all their uh, the, um, Thai language into Myanmar and then the patient, they escort the patient to the border, and then like the, it is admitted in the Myanmar region. So one of the biggest problem with this form is the language and the address where they are going. So in here, we don't even know, okay, this person is transferred, but where is he going? So whether he's going into Myanmar or Vietnam or like other things. So those were the few additional changes what we tried to request to say how best like we can try to deal with it. And then like we, we all agree that like English will be a common language for people to transfer. So when a person is transferred from one country uh, to other country, then there will be two additional fields will be required, which will be filled by the, ref uh, the person who is referring. So either by them or either by like someone else before they can send that data to the regional database. So in the country database, like all the country database, all the data from one particular country resides in there. Only the person who's been transferred outside the country, that information will be only transferred. So it's also because like we don't want to take the entire country database and put it into regional database. So only those people who are like transferred out of that particular country can like just like push the data. Okay, these are the different things and these are different fields which have been required and then they push. They will also push the data with the ID. Um, during the assessment of this, all the, the five countries uh, TB system that every country has their own online software um, where they uh, have a TB ID for each and every hospital and every person has a TB ID. So when they transfer, so what they transfer is the TB ID of that particular country. When they import it into regional database, regional database will create a one more ID called regional ID. But user can actually search by whether the regional idea or the local ID 
And if a person is accepted into, let's just say, Thailand person is sent to uh, Vietnam and Vietnam accepts it, then Vietnam people have to update what is their Vietnam national ID when they are accepted in one particular hospital. So just quickly to show you, I will go to higher level first. How the I'll show you the regional outcome and then the country outcome and then like we'll I'll try to go for the the details. Just quickly. So this was the the country dashboard, right? So like this is the this is the WHO dashboard, which we exactly use it for our regional things. So that's that's how like you say the TB one notification. This is no change, but this is only from the the Lao. And what we have done is only migrant one. We have we have not included all the notification. It's only the migrants. So from the uh, the TB uh, system in Lao, so we exported only the migrant because uh, Lao started using uh, case based surveillance. So we know like how many migrants and everything were there. So when we discuss these things with um, um, uh, uh, TB um, people in uh, in Lao. They just say we don't want to overburden our people, so we have tractors. So we'll just like have the migrant. We already have the the um, people's nationality. So based on that one, we can make this one, so that like we don't have to overburden our health worker. So based on that one, we can try to do all these different things. Similar kind of approach also happened in in Laos, uh, sorry, in Vietnam, in Myanmar, and also in other places. Yeah, this one is also like. This is in Lao database. Like what we tried to do was in Lao, just show me how many migrants you have in your database. So then, like we just say, okay, the Thailand was 13, uh, the most were Vietnam, uh, China was 40, uh, Myanmar people 49, and the others. So they like in their system, like other nationality, they just like have few few places. Um, in Vietnam was only they don't collect nationality in. Um, uh, Cambodia, they collect six nationality. In Thailand, it's the list of all the nationality. I don't know, 17 nationality, I guess. Right? So they don't have the list of all the country names. So at least like the key ones, so that like it's it's easier for them to, to manage and maintain. And here is by uh, region, how many people are been migrated. And then the top one was the outcome, how many have been transferred out, lost to follow up, and all the different things. So this one was like, again, Long time back, we if you just see, we had the treatment details and then the referral details. So this these four details were added only for the GSM uh, country when we were trying to deal with it. But in the top, we had the baseline, lab, uh, DST, and adverse event. Those were the, the stages from the WHO package. But then, like for the, the regional transfer, so what we tried to do was, was transfer out, referred or transferred out, acknowledgement, like what we just uh, see in the paper form. And like we acknowledge this person, and then one is the the outcome stage, whether it is cured, loss to follow up, uh, replace or death. So in the patient migrant things, what we also included is when we did the study, we also collected all kind of documentation. Uh, we had a, a long meeting in uh, Singapore with IOM that like say the classification of migrant who are migrant, and they say like I am migrant, Yon is migrant. All the people who are non-Vietnamese, like including Lao, currently in Fukuk, we are all migrants. Whether even for the short terms, like we are also migrant. So that was also the one of the things, like what, uh, how they were trying to explain what is who is a migrant, especially IOM when they're trying to deal with who is a migrant, and like we are all documented migrant. That means we have passport number and all things. So then, like we, many people who are traveling from uh, Myanmar to Thailand. It's a long border. So there, like they can actually, I and Yon, we were there. We can actually cross. We can just like, it's a very small border. We can just like swim there. It's very small uh, edge. You can even jump there, the smaller, narrow river. And then you are in the other side. So it's very hard. There is no uh, pass. You can also get a daily pass to get in. And then you don't have to come back. So that's also the possibility. So that's why like we just have an undocumented one. And we included a list of all the things, temporary passport, border pass, uh, health insurance, uh, 10 years card, which is given by the, the village people, uh, national ID, driving license. So all different kind of things and then the ID. And there was a lot of discussion between, do we want to record all these things? 
I'm just saying we are from Ministry of Health. Our main aim is to treat patient, not to check their documentation. So whether they are like things, so then we just say, okay, fine. But how can we just like make sure that like cross-border things works fine? We just say, hey, that's not our problem. That's your problem. <laughs> so it, it has been like challenging, but like we've been like trying to just say, okay, you can search by different ways and the use of CSOs. So there are lots of the CSOs who are helping the TB patient to track them, to, to do the screening. And then like when they are traveling around, so they are actually referring that particular person to other CSOs in other other the border country. So they've been like trying to import all the things. So there are lots of other challenges. It's not all the challenges can be solved technically. That was the, the one of the aspects from here. So this was also the, um, um, the message. So this is a patient uh, who has been transferred from uh, Myanmar to, uh, to Laos, for example. So when they transfer, this is the message what get this particular person is going to come around. We also had a um, um, discussion on uh, where, who should get it. Because currently what Jan was saying, the, when they transfer, it is from one hospital to other hospital from the neighboring countries. But in NTP, like what it goes, like it's just like when you transfer, it goes to regional database and notification will be sent to the national NTP person and also the intended province uh, or NTP province or hospital. So those were the two persons who get the notification. This person will come. This is the intended province and this is the intended date of time. And then if the person goes there, it's well and good. If not, it's lost to follow up. If goes there, if he goes to other province, the other province people can actually search. Okay, this person was supposed to come around here, but he went to other place and he can admit it. And then a message is sent back to the country that, okay, this particular person is admitted. This is the, the, the number, um, uh, this is the registration number of that particular person. And these are the contact details of the hospital that will be, will be sent back. So those were the, the basic few things. This was the, like in COVID, it's also the same way. Because like in COVID, like we wanted the person to carry, to like how does you verify that like this person is this person and he got all this different information. How best we can try to deal with it. This was something which we were trying, if we can, it's possible to like have everything in the QR codes, which can be read into the other places and it, uh, it we can, he can be imported into the system. But this, not yet, but let's just see how things work now. This were the, the, um, the few, few, few things what we've been trying to include new innovations uh, into the, um, the cross-border TV. And right now we are uh, focusing on GSM countries, but it also, once the concept and everything is ready, doesn't mean it have to be only GMS country, but it's also from other countries can be used in this way. That's all from from me. One comment, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's online. Online, oh, yeah, 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 online. We have got some uh, questions because uh, many of these countries have uh, uh, projects on the border with, with active uh, case finding, where they actually try to identify uh, TB in migrants and how, how are we fitting in with it and, and actually we could use it in exactly the same way by registering and sending it to the national uh, database whether it's going across the border to that database or to, to uh, via the migrant uh, database and to, to notify to the to the correct uh, country database so it's a very multi-purpose way of and we didn't say much about how to actually uh, the interoperability is functioning functions from all stages from from uh, more automatic uh, interoperability to download uh, uh, whatever kind of, of uh, format uh, to actually whatever if you enter them physically uh, manually yeah good any questions Thank you. Uh, you talked about uh, the patients being transferred and the, the pool where they get uh, they get uh, they keep on waiting until they reach their destination. Um, and you talked about the search where uh, other provinces can search the uh, the requisite patient. Uh, giving that kind of an option to to all the end users, 
that's something that needs to be like uh, it, it should it be done or should it not be done uh, technically it's a good thing but uh, patient confidentiality and all that stuff and giving open access how do you uh, get by that uh, actually like we didn't give the the things this was the one something which we want to try to propose like you just say if one person is going to a particular country when they try to search you're not searching for the all this record um you're just like searching for those names but now ntp has become more strict they just say nope you will there are only things it will come to the ntp and we in ntp national level will assign where he has to go so that's how currently the systems are so but like the people csos actually help them the non-government organization, uh, the civil uh, things, and like most of the NGOs who are dealing with, uh, they are actually following the patient uh, quite closely between two borders. About searching in other places, what we try to do, if a, if a one particular person is searching for more than like what is need, it's been, it will be flat in DHRS. Um, you cannot search, and then like um, the cross-border thing, Many people from Thailand, uh, many people from the neighboring countries are going to Thailand. Thailand is the, the most people, uh, migrant people are there compared to Myanmar, Vietnam, uh, Cambodia, and Laos. Uh, again, like when it goes on, it will be notified to that particular facility only. If other person comes around, like it goes to other place, there is a facility where just for the temporary way, when they search, you will just like get, okay, this person is there. So then like they have to request what we call is breaking the glass only for that particular type. And like if a person breaks the glass two times, then like we know, okay, there is something wrong happening with this guy. Why is he going to search for so many people? Right, any other questions? If no, then like we go for the next uh, presentation. That will be from Pakistan. Thank you so much uh, for giving us the opportunity to present what we are, what is happening in Pakistan regarding TV. Uh, over to today's topic is uh, DHIS2 TV tracker capture implementation in Pakistan uh, in both public sector and private sector. Um, what has been happening, what is happening, and uh, uh, what have we faced so far with the implementation of DHIS2 regarding TV. Um, Coming to the point that the team that in Pakistan that we have is uh, we have a substantial number of team members. Um, myself, Fahad, we have a national DHS2 coordinator, uh, the MISA, uh, MIS officer, Shafaka Susan, these are all from the private se uh, public sector. Then in the private sector, these are the technical persons that are leading the implementation uh, Abdullah Latisa, project manager, uh, Ms. Seher, uh, senior ID. Um, as a Yub Saab data visualization specialist, Mosna Shahid, so Naina Nawaz is there as research. So you see a lot of dynamic personalities there, uh, all contributing to the implementation of TV Tracker. And um, so uh, having all these dynamic people in the team uh, gives us the flex flexibility to use DHS2 in, uh, uh, in a good way. Like we have all these standard packages available in the uh, WHO uh, metadata packages, um, but having this team allows us to do customizations, uh, creating um, metadata packages um, like WHO if, uh, with the, within the country dynamics. So for the public sector, um, we started implementing in 2018. Uh, there was a TOT uh, followed by uh, list of trainings um, throughout the country. You know, Pakistan, it's not just a single country. Uh, it, it has devolved into uh, multiple provinces. 
and each province stands alone uh, with, when it comes to implementation. They have their own directions and uh, their own implementation challenges. So uh, we started this journey in 2018 uh, with the aggregate module. Uh, before that, it was Excel-based reporting. Um, in 2018, with the support of uh, HISP uh, and uh, University of Oslo, uh, we started our journey on the DHIS2 for the aggregate module. Um, with uh, country specific program indicators, again with WHO recommended um, dashboards and uh, guidelines. Um, this journey took around three years and still uh, is going on. Uh, but during this process, uh, we started to work on the tracker part. Uh, in 2019, um, we started. Um, uh, customization of TV tracker um, for the mandatory case notification project. Uh, this was done solely in house by the ministry, and um, it was reflected um, as per the forms that were available in the country. Uh, this project uh, was carried out for two years before it was closed and uh, the results were uh, quite significant. Uh, then again, we used the tracker, not the WHO metadata package, but the customized tracker for multi-country grant project. Uh, that was uh, for Pakistan, Afghanistan, and uh, Iran. So uh, the tracker is being used at the moment in the country uh, for recording the patients of the TV. Um, and the technical support is ongoing at the moment. And we are doing another venture, uh, similar as the one uh, that was discussed earlier. Um, so last but not least, uh, the third uh, implementation that we did for the tracker was the pilot uh, in Islamabad in our federal uh, capital for the tuberculosis case notification, TB01, uh, that we see, and uh, again, uh, this was customized in the house. Um, we tried to follow the standards, uh, but the WHO metadata package is different, so um, we are working on that as we speak. Um, the pilot was conducted last year in 2021, and uh, the results are still coming in. And in the meantime, uh, with the support of uh, University of Oslo, his and Global Fund, and um, other donors, uh, we are working on customizing the, uh, the WHO metadata package for TB tracker, and uh, we'll be doing that in quarter one and quarter two of 2023. So here are some glimpses of the WHO dashboards that are uh, in the national system. So we have tried to use uh, GIS as well. The mapping files are there, so we can plot and uh, see what's happening, the notifications and all that. So the way forward for the public sector is that we roll out the TV tracker in quarter one and quarter two of 2023 for all districts. And uh, since we are a devolved uh, country, uh, each province has its own implementation. Uh, Punjab province, one of the provinces, is the highest uh, burden uh, province in the country, and it has its own implementation, um, an electronic medical record system uh, developed by uh, uh, their HISDU department. So um, we will be supporting them in, in the integration of that EMR with the DHIS2 for the case base. So we are looking forward to these two. Um, Challenges. So this was for the public sector. One thing that I would like to add here is that uh, for the public sector, we have a single DHIS2 instance for tuberculosis, malaria, and HIV in the country. So for TB, the centers that are reporting for TB uh, they, and some of the centers are reporting for malaria and some of the centers uh, might be reporting for HIV. So the, all the data is coming in to the national DHIS2 instance that is present at the common management unit for HIV and malaria under the 
uh, leadership of Ministry of Health. Uh, for the private sector, the private sector, um, uh, mainly the Mercy Corps, uh, that is supporting um, the country implementation for tuberculosis interventions in the country, um, they were using uh, their own customized information system that was designed for their need um, and is still being used for recording and reporting in the country. But with the shift uh, in the dynamics of the public sector, uh, as per commitment for DHS to roll out in the country, uh, Masiko, with the support of BMGF and his Pakistan, is piloting WHO track, uh, tracker package as per BPM requirements. But that's going on at the moment. Um, pilot has been completed. Um, I guess in five districts and the capital. Uh, Android app is being used as data entry medium at the GP level. So uh, for public sector, it's desktop, web-based version that's being used for the DHIS2. Uh, for private sector, we are using Android app for the recording and reporting needs. Um, again, here I would like to add that uh, the WHO indicator driven dashboards are being used for the tracker reporting. Here are some glimpses uh, you will be seeing. Um, I guess, yeah. So uh, these are some glimpses of the tracker that's being customized and used for the case based surveillance of, by the private sector. The organizational units have been aligned. So these are the same organization units. We have one structure that's available. So public sector and private sector both are using the same organization units. Um, here you can see the form that's, uh, uh, that covers the uh, different um, stages, diagnostics as well as treatment as well as outcome and contact screening. And the final thing is the dashboards that have been prepared. So with the support of the team um, and the donors, the DHS implementation in the private sector uh, is being rolled out. The way forward for the private sector, I believe um, uh, the pilot uh, results will be seen in the coming months and uh, will be customizing in the uh, DHS to further as per the outcome. Uh, also, we are expecting a rollout of tracker in 120 districts of uh, Pakistan for the private sector in the coming months. So as we talked about that Pakistan uh, is a big country with multiple provinces and uh, being devolved, it has its own um, standing in every province. So we are covering 157 public districts for the aggregate part reporting and uh, 120 uh, private districts uh, as well. Uh, so that's pretty much it from us. Uh, if you have any question, we are available. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there's one question. Right. Yep. Okay, so there is one question online uh, for, for you. It's um, uh, why using Android for for the private sector? Uh, so that's a very interesting question. Um, in private sector, we have DFS. Uh, those are working in the field. So um, uh, we prefer to use uh, the Android version to capture the information rather than using the web version. Uh, that's uh, portable, allowable, and then it's easy for us that way, <laughs> rather than carrying a laptop. <laughs> or are they giving them the laptop? They can just use the. Yeah. 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 Offline mode. Yeah. Any other question online? Yep. Okay, so we don't have any questions. We are less people. Was it a big lunch? Okay, let's just see. Okay. 
So right now, like what we'll try to do, like we we know like we have the the DB has been used in multiple places. So the question from us, like we from me to Yon, what all the different challenges have you been facing in uh, getting the regional TB working? The high level challenges. And what country can do in cross border TB referral? Yeah, it's, a, it's a challenge to get the countries to agree on the principle of sharing data. So, uh, one approach is then to get it more down to the practical level and saying that today you are referring patient using uh, line or email or whatsapp or facebook or things like that it's better to do it between two secure databases and then start with that that's what we have suggested to to take it that instead of going to inter governmental agreement or data sharing but i have looked it up the iom actually have a template for data sharing which we also can suggest to use because it will focus on what kind of usage and for whom and uh, focus on that and uh, that should be possible to 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 describe exactly what what it's for and and the restrictions and, and, and the limitations for cross-border referrals. And then we have this aggregate data for dashboards, etc. That's more like same debate as we have when we want open dashboards and think of how to share data to the to the more general uh, public. But again, that's 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 more of a uh, agreement issue. Then. And the problem, of course, in the region is that there are five countries. Not only between two and two, but five countries. So our approach is to take two and two and go with the three. I mean, actually, uh, Vietnam, Laos, and, and Cambodia is a kind of a triangle that we can we can work on. Yeah. Thanks. Malaria. Malaria. John knows everything about uh, malaria, and he will tell that of some reason they managed to get a uh, data sharing agreement even though it's very difficult to see exactly the text in the photograph we have of that <laughs> in malaria there is a ministry level agreement by all the uh, the health ministry from the five countries to share the data usually like what happens is by program by program there is very less effort to like to say okay now we are only talking about um tb what happens then next to hiv so malaria they already have an agreement to share the data between all the gms country but not for tb the tb we are still struggling to get the the agreement uh, things done okay so now like i know like in indonesia we've been using tb SIPP. okay now like now, the question is can you explain how TB system is in Indonesia? Okay, thank you. In Indonesia, we have um, maybe 13 form, form to use um, TB, to uh, record the TB. Uh, so there's a lot of um, things to do uh, to record the TB. The first maybe um, the surveillance go to the uh, hospital that they uh, maybe in, no, no, uh, in, in hospital, uh, the there is a um, book for the register for the someone that suspect to be TBC, and then um, they are um, record to the um, request to um, check the bacteriologist, and then uh, they have a card for the um, treatment, something like that. And until they are going to be um, surveillance, like uh, they are positive or negative, like that. So there is a long, a long process to uh, record the TV. Which system you are using? Uh, right now, um, maybe it's it's just um, manual, manual uh, record. Sorry. 
you know, it's, uh, for us in Lebanon, uh, we have foreigner uh, worker coming to Lebanon. So the, uh, the first thing they have to go to the hospital and make their scan. So if they uh, are confirmed cases, they are sent to the sanatorium for treatment. Then they can go back to outside and continue their treatment. So since January, we developed a system on DHIS. We took the WHO form, uh, the, the original form. Accordingly, we built the, the form uh, on DHIS with different stages. And since January, now we are using it. And now we are working on a report since we have some data now. We're trying to develop uh, the related chart accordingly. Like in um, many countries, like I've seen, like in Vietnam, like the public uh, facility or public ministry are also doing the presumptive uh, screening, but not in other places. Like in Laos, it's only when you are positive, you are admitted into or registered into the public health system. Before that one, it's all maintained by NGOs or other things where they are doing the village level screening. Um, in um, uh, Cambodia, it's also the, the CSOs are actually doing the, all the presumptive screening and then when they're positive they're actually taken to the uh, to the hospital so there it's a heavy need on also to include the cso's uh, information in the public health system and then like, we are facing lots of challenges saying that how can we give the access of dhs to to the cso's because they are actually doing all their data collection and they some of the cso's already have a system how best we can try to integrate their data into into the national system of the TB. So these are the different challenges we've been facing in many, many areas. Not only like just focus only on the national system, but also try to use the other uh, means of collections and linkages between the CSOs. And right now, at least like government are accepting the data from them to, in, to be included into the national system. And they can, they're just saying, okay, they can see the dashboard, but we are not going to give the access to them yet. Uh, so those are also, again, the political and things issues to just to make sure can these people can also get, get the access, at least the read only access to, to see these are all the things in my community. So many cases has been updated and what happened after the treat, uh, TB treatment, whether it was uh, lots to follow up or things. So those are things which we can try to share across not only the public health system, but also with the other partners. Uh, during the assessment of the regional TB in this 5GMS country, we had this list of all stakeholders. So each and every country, when we did the, uh, the study, the stakeholder of the TB is quite huge. Uh, if we just talk, focus only on the Ministry of Health and things, that that's will be very limited. In Vietnam itself, like the CHAI is also working with the um, national TB system where CHAI have developed a mobile, system, a mobile system. Whenever they see the presumptive positive cases in Vietnam, the Ministry of Health also recording the presumptive cases. So they are sending the data from their system directly into the Vietnam national system. So, uh, no, the Vietnam national system, which is called VI Times. Uh, it's Vietnam TB Information Management System. Uh, I just call it VI Farms. It's, it's easier to like a newspaper. Uh, but that system is an online system, and Chai has their own local system, which is used only in few provinces or the southern provinces. So whenever they find any any presumptive cases, uh, they are actually sending the data to VI Farms, and then the national system is also sharing that particular location to them. So this is something which is um, very nice to hear that like the there is a linkage between national system and the the chai like the within few provinces where they are actually supporting not only the the case to bring them to the hospital. I guess like that's also some best practices what we uh, what was nice to to hear when during the study uh, that what we can be used in other countries setup also. My question is that, you know, when you make a screening, sometimes you find them negative. Does the tool in the DHIS, I think there is a TB DHIS tool already existing. Does it come with the negative cases or only the positive cases? Um, in, the, in the DHIS store in Vietnam? Yes, yes. In DHIS too, like it only, in Laos, it's only positive cases. But like in um, 
um, the DHS to metadata packages and all things is all, again like it's only the positive cases, right? So at least most of the places, but it has the ability to record the negative cases. Then they, you're not moving forward. So the screening screening part usually is in other area. In Lao, there is um, an NGO called HPP who is dealing with all the screening. And when there is positive, that record is pushed into the the WHO TB case uh, surveillance uh, uh, package. But Positive, not for not for screening. So there's um, in Lao in DHS, so they have divided, made their own screening things. Yeah. So the, again, like it's the the thing is not many public health system are doing the screening. In Vietnam, they have this five module where they start with the screening, but only in few facilities. There are few facilities which only focusing on treatment, and there are few facilities is only for diagnosis. Not even a treatment. So they have they categorized this their um, the TB units as different places. In Cambodia, is is treatment only. In in Laos, it's only treatment. So again, it's depend on different countries' need how best we want to try to do support as a TB as a whole. Not only start when there's positive, but also try to to do the screening and like how best we can try to do it, especially at the village level. And can Ministry of Health can take this burden of screening? And recording all the things uh, because also in malaria when they started when the case in the um, when the case is so much you don't want to record individual cases that particular time you want to just go down the the case burden has to be reduced and then you are dealing with elimination for the case burden you don't have to record on all the cases and then you are overburdening your health worker to dealing with all different things including positive or negative again it's also the, the same same kind of things can be implemented in TB2. That like if you want to, we don't want to overburden our health workers to do all the negative cases. So that's why like we only focus on the positive one. But can we get at least the aggregate data, all different kind of things from other places? And if the CSOs are already using, because if they are small, they, they are actually maintaining the, all the, the names and everything. And maybe we can just take the suspected cases into it and then start from there yeah uh, in bangladesh what uh, what is done bangladesh we are not using the uh, tracker for tv cases there's another software we're using but there's no screening there's actually a suspected tv case so if there is any case which is suspected that's only entering the tracker and then if it's positive is go forward if it's negative then it's stop there so that is the our case protocol but for the populations, uh, population screening, actually, we are doing other project for other disease depends on the policy. So if there is a national policy, then we have to. So if there is a TB elimination, that's my required policy. But our case is the cervical cancer has the elimination pro government decided. So we have to do the 30 to 60. All women should be screened, despite of positive or negative. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it seems uh, with Indonesia uh, in facility health facility we have two application. There are YPTB that um, to notify the doctor that there is a TB patient, and uh, there is a snowball TB that uh, to track the patient. Like just maybe uh, if there is any suspect, they just uh, track, and then if uh, the contact is uh, is then positive, so they stop like that. Thanks. Thanks for all the comments. So it's good that like we share our experience about the TV. So I guess like we are time for the coffee. So we can break now and then we can be back at 3.30 to start. In this place is on the custom apps where we can know what are the different custom apps extending DHIS to for the local needs. Okay. Thanks.